welcome to the Green and Gold Gridiron Show. I'm Margo Morin. And I'm Chris Sheets from Kissing Country 103.9. We have got a packed show today. We're going to see how the Eskimos are staying in touch with local football routes. We're going to find out who the best go-kart driver is on the team and check in with Morley Scott. But first, we're going to talk about something, well, I don't know anything about, but I think you do, Margo. Well, yes, he's talking about the cheer team. I remember my first year as a cheerleader. I think that was 2005. That's making me feel pretty old right oh, now. you are so old. But uh, this, this one must have been super excited this year. It was her rookie year and we're going to get to know a little bit more about her. Her name's Christina. Check it out. My name is Christina Milite and this is my first year on Edmonton Eskimos cheer team. Uh, I was born and raised in Edmonton. Um, kind of started out in Londonderry and moved my way down to the southeast central area. I'm taking education transfer program here at Grant McEwen University. I've been here for four semesters in total um, and I plan to transfer on to the U of A now. So hopefully I get a reply back and I get accepted. I want to finish my degree for education at the U of A. Um, hopefully teach maybe, go for a master's or maybe go into law. I'm kind of just keeping it open and fresh. So. There's so many different areas at Grant McEwen. You can have like a really quiet section where there's absolutely no talking. Then there's like the mediocre section where you can kind of talk quietly, which is what I prefer because I kind of like a little bit of white noise when I'm studying. And then there's the really loud section um, that I can't really stay in because everyone's just rowdy and having a good time. But if I'm ever bored during a spare, I kind of go there. <laughs> I love playing Call of Duty. I really suck at it, but sometimes I get good days and my highest is 20 to, I think, 13. So that's 20 kills to 13 deaths, so it's good. <laughs> I was really proud of myself. My brother Tony, he is definitely my inspiration for joining Eskimos and even just living life the way I do. Um, he had spinal bifida uh, growing up and at that time you can't really correct a, like a thing like that. So. Um, he really met that adversity with courage and I draw my inspiration from that because it must have taken a long time to like accept the fact that like he couldn't really go a lot of places, he was bedridden, but I never heard him complain and he was always so content and that's why I think people gravitated towards him is because he just took everything and he made lemonade and he made lots of lemonade. So anytime, even though he's not here with me, he died in 2006. Instead of him saying like, oh, it's okay, Christina, it'll be okay, I can always just draw inspiration from that and just think my day's not that bad because he had way worse, so. And he was a big Eskimos fan, so he'll be proud of me. Wow, Christina really is an inspiration. I think she's made a great addition to this year's team. Absolutely. This may be a dumb question, like I've never asked them before. But anyway, do you guys actually get a chance to watch much of the game when you're cheering? Well, have you ever seen those YouTube videos where the cheerleader gets completely taken out by the yes. wide receiver? Yes. Yeah, no, that's never happened to an Eskimos cheerleader. That means we're watching the game, always paying attention to the action. That's a good idea, actually. Uh, can you tell me what guys like J.R. LaRose, Rick Walters, Corbin Sharoon, and Tim Prinzen all have in common? They all love the Eskimos cheer team? <laughs> that and they were also all born right here in Edmonton played for the team they grew up watching which is a long-term goal for many local players who took the field in this year's Eskimo high school camp here's this week's champions in the community check it out the Eskimo high school skills camp was an idea started nine years ago when Ed Hervey was a player now even with his playing days behind him Hervey continues to run the camp behind the same idea it was started on when we started doing the camp, or at least when I got involved a few years ago, it, the importance of developing um, grassroots football here in Alberta was something that was uh, vitally important to the Edmonton Eskimos. And the only way we could ex actually exercise that was by actually participating. The camp is run by current Eskimo players who are in town over the offseason, one of which who played in the camp back in high school, Corbin Sharoon. That's what we're talking about. Those stories are going to exist more and more as we continue to do this. Uh, Corbin has, has proven obviously to be a good player you know, when he was in high school and now at the professional level and we're hoping to find two or three more Corbins every year and at some point you know, we can be doing this in 10, year, 10 more years and talking about five or six guys that participated. It's a great feeling and I'm glad I can give back to the kids and give back to the community and just show everybody that you, know, you can make it so it's, it's good. 
After skills are worked on all week, the camp concludes with a green and gold game with this year's teams being coached by Matthew Bertrand and Aaron Fiaconi. As coaches, they take a basic approach to this week. I think for us, I mean, we, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, so I think uh, we're definitely trying to refine a little things that they do. You know, if we can notice, uh, you know, little flaws in their game or technique, then that's going to help us a lot uh, to, to, to bring them along. Uh, they're doing a great job. You know, the effort's there, which is one thing you can't teach, right? They all want to be here. They're excited about being here. They have great effort level. And uh, basically, if we can just find the little things to help them and, and take them to the next level, then that's, that's all we could ask for. If they learn just like one or two different stuff, that'll, that'll be good for them. And if they can bring it back to the team and just like show them, show the other one what they learned, that'll, that'll be good for everybody for sure. At the end of the day, the ultimate goal for the Eskimos is to strengthen the level of skill and support for this great game throughout the province. If at the top of it all, though, they can bring on some local talent to the team, it only helps. Jordan Greenlee, Shaw TV, Capital Region. Margo, what a great opportunity for those guys to get instruction from the best of the best, right? And who knows, in a few years, they might be over there at Commonwealth Stadium doing Absolutely. their thing. So, Chris, last week we saw Derek Schiavone and Taylor Inglis get ready to go head-to-head -head in a crazy go-kart race. So this week in Out of Bounds, we're going to see who takes the cake in their go-kart race at Speeders. Hey, I'm Taylor Inglis, long snapper for the Edmonton Eskimos. And I'm Derek Schiavone, punter and kicker at the Edmonton Eskimos. Today on Out of Bounds, Derek and I are going to be racing go-karts at Speeders. What did I say, buddy? Get used to the view from behind. <laughs> was you I can close? Dust all day long. Pardon? Did you hear that? All I heard is I won. That's <laughs> all I heard. Close, whatever. Winner, loser. Hey, we got a few more. <laughs> better for you, Derek. You almost caught me that time. Oh. Definitely won that one. I think you won, eh? No chance. So Derek and I just split races. We're one and one. He beat me by five one hundredths of a second on his best lap, and I took him by two tenths of a second on my first. So now Speeders has brought out their two top pros to show us how it's done. <laughs> I told you I'd get you. Oh, buddy, what happened? I don't know, buddy. That's all right. I'll take reclaim my championship. So that's it. That's all. After a uh, dominant performance by myself here at Speeders. 
about made to be, it interesting. Made it made interesting, interesting, but I'm about to be crowned the champion. So thanks for having us. It's been fun. We'll see you guys tomorrow. That's right. Wow, those were some really close races. Great job, guys. Now, I wonder if you and I went to speeders who they'd put their money on. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm one of those old guys that goes about 10 kilometers below the speed limit and stays in the fast lane. That's you. Yeah, Ugh. so you'd have to pass me on the right. Anyway, Morley Scott's a great driver. Busy guy. Does a great job with play-by-play, -play, does Morley's Minute, and also washes Brian Hall's car on a weekly basis. Take it away, Morley. Thanks, Chris. Well, I'm here with uh, Patrick Cabongo this week, and uh, I want to talk a little bit, Patrick, about uh, a great start to the football season for the Edmonton Eskimos. A year ago at this time, you were 0-3 on your way to 0-4. It's amazing how things have turned around. Yeah, you know, I mean, for the guys that still here from last year, you know, we sort of seeing the two sides of, of the medal right now. I mean, it's great to be 3-0. and I mean, uh, but those games are done. Now we got Calgary coming up. They have a very good team, very good defense. You know, so we've got to get ready for that and go down there and win. Okay, a little bit more on Calgary coming up, but first I want to ask you just about the way the game's being played this year. The one thing I've noticed, especially about the offensive line, is you guys are, are happy. You guys are having fun out there. Uh, there's a lot of celebrating when, when, when the holes get opened up and the touchdowns get scored. Uh, uh, tell me a little bit about the different attitude that you feel amongst your offensive linemen this year. You know, I think it starts with our coaches. You know, we think about Kavis and Marcus and, you know, Eric Tillman did, did a great job just bringing some new guys in. And, and you know, uh, Tim Prinzen every week gets, you know, gets us ready for to play and, you know, with technique and preparation, just as blocking scheme and, and things like this. So, you know, it's great. And, like, you know, and, and the one thing uh, uh, Coach Prinzen brought up, he's like, you know what, when we have to do have a, a big play, make sure, you know, we, 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 we do – celebrate a little bit like we're happy and we keep on making those plays game after game and plays after plays you know so it just you know for sure we're happy I mean when you win it's nice you know but it's it's mostly just you know continuing that building that that tradition and the next game is in Calgary this week obviously a measuring stick for this team yeah it's gonna be a good game you know look forward for it and you know that like I said they have a good team but we have a great team too so it's gonna be a a good, uh, a, good, uh, a good battle of Alberta. Right, we're all looking forward to it. Patrick, thanks for this. You, of course, can catch the game coming up on 6.30 Ched on Saturday. Well, that does it for today's episode. But remember, you can check us out every Wednesday starting at 4.30 p.m. on Shaw TV Channel 10. And as always, you can check us out at esks.com and shawtv.com. Margot been waiting weeks for this. Eskimos taking on our rivals from the south. Calgary Stampeders, Saturday, July 23rd, 5 o'clock start. How much do we dislike the Calgary Stampeders? This much. All the way around the world and back. That's a long ways around, I think. <laughs> thousands and thousands of miles. You can listen to the game live on the voice of the Eskimo 630 chat or check your Shaw HD listings. But until next time, go, go Esco! Speedy go-kart race at yeah. Speeder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was super speedy. Strutting their stuff. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Doing the strut strut. All right. Doing the do, 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 do. Put a ring on it. He also washes Brian Hall's car every week. You know what? He's got a busy week. Brian, Brian take it away. Dislike. dislike. How much? How much do I dislike? So I said dislike. Didn't no, I? you yeah. said how? Oh. I said dislike. Oh, I thought you said. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Sorry. That's okay. <laughs>